<clears throat> My name is Brian. I'm an alcoholic. I think I've spoke once before. Still a couple minutes. Um, what it was like for me, I started drinking here in Paramount. I was in third grade, drinking out of little Dixie cups before school. And, uh, because we watched our, our, me and my buddy, we watched our parents throw parties and drink, and we watched them make strawberry daiquiris, and we were pretty good at it. And, uh, that's how we got started. That's how I got started. And, uh, <clears throat> I remember when, one of the first memories that sticks out good is, uh, we're walking to school and we had about three or four of those little Dixie cups full. And, uh, we watched a crossing guard lady get into a car accident right in front of us. And, uh, she blamed us for it. And we just giggled our ass off. We thought it was the funniest thing. And, uh, that was what I remember from it. And later on growing up, I didn't want to drink. I watched my parents. My mom was alcoholic and, uh, it was real ugly at the house. They were fighting all the time. And I didn't want to drink. I didn't want no part of how they were and what what they did when they were drinking. But I would stay up all night listening to the family and all their little conversations and shit. You know, the rest of the kids are sleeping. I'd stay up and listen. Afraid I was going to miss something. I'm still afraid I'm going to miss something. It's uh, <clears throat> I didn't know it then, and I didn't even know it when I first started drinking. But uh, I already had the alcoholic tendency that the predisposition of my parents. That's that's how I feel about it. it you know. That's what they did, and that's what I did, and that's how I got started. And uh, I started late. I was in high school. I moved from Paramount to Anaheim Hills. My parents were divorced by that time, and uh, <clears throat> I had friends that were running cross-country track, and they were pulling straight A's in honors classes and working part-time jobs, and they were staying up all night drinking and partying. And I was like, well, it didn't affect them, you know. It's not affecting them. Maybe I'll try it. And... Uh, now they just scratch their head and look at me and kind of wonder what the hell happened. You know, they, they're they human rights lawyers and communications majors, and they all, they finished. They, they quit doing all that stuff, and I didn't. I immediately, I got a 502 within a year and a half, and uh, and I was off and running. And I, shortly after that, my dad had passed away and left me a house and a business, <clears throat> and I didn't want no part of that growing up. And I just let it go, you know, probably two or three hundred thousand dollars worth of assets and, you know, a lifetime of potential income gone in like six months. I just didn't want nothing to do with it. And, uh, you know, I used to drink to feel my feelings. And, uh, cause I grew up, I grew up stuffing and I grew up not crying and I wasn't, you know, not allowed to be emotional and walking on glass and who am I upsetting and, you know, I got to play all the parts because I was the only child. And, uh, so that was kind of cool. Get all the attention when they're divorced. But I used to drink to, to feel. I couldn't let out my emotions and so I'd have to set my mind to it. You know, if my dad passed away, I didn't shed a tear until I sat down and I drank to do that. You know, I mean, I didn't always get all emotional or sloppy drunk, like whiny or crying drunk when I drink, but if I wanted to feel that stuff, I had to like let it out and that's what I did. And, uh, I remember I was introduced to AA. Oh shoot! Right after my first 502, of course, I had to go to meetings. And uh, shortly after that, I tried to go to uh, a, a hospital over in, in San Pedro, and I wasn't ready. And then I tried to go into a recovery home shortly after that, and my dad's like, you know, my dad didn't want to uh, fork out the cash for it because he's like, how do we know you're going to do this? How do we know you're serious? I'd already yanked his chain a few times, and I was, you know, I just sick of that. Where I went from there is my dad passed away. We lost everything. I went, you know, lived, had a three-bedroom house, but I was cooking oatmeal in an old coffee can over candles. And uh, the gas was getting shut off, and my shit's all over the neighborhood. People would come and relieve me of my stuff when I wasn't home. And uh sold the house. I was in jail from Wayside. I had to negotiate to sell the house from Wayside. That was comedy. It was, you know, that, and that's where alcohol and drugs took me, you know. Uh, that's where it took me. It took me to the streets. I think, you know, I, I, I thought I was doing good when my buddy kicked out somebody who was living next to a dumpster so I could live in there. You know, I thought, you know, I was special. And, uh, that was the highlight of it, man. And <clears throat> I lived on this little platform. It was about this wide and it was about this high up the ground. I had a little corner piece of plywood up. I could put a little TV on it. And, uh, I was moving up because I've been walking the streets for a while. 
And um, then I walked Paramount for, I don't know, I only just spent a couple nights out to, to just, you know, I'd, God help me. So if, you, if, you really, if you really exist, you know, help. And uh, that was like a surrender point at that time. And um, shortly after that, I, uh, I managed to climb my way into my mom's door just to visit. And my friend dropped me off and pushed me out of the car. And my mom goes, where are you going? And she goes, if I thought you were going to stay, I would tell you you couldn't come over. Yeah. And, uh, and I stayed with her for about three days. And I said, you know, I think I better, I think it's time. I need to go get some help. She'd already been so, cleaning us over for a while. And uh, she gave me like $7 and I took a bus from San Pedro. And I went over to Norwalk. Well, first I went, I called Cider House to try to get in. And uh, they told me, yeah, you can come on in. Just give us a couple of hours advance notice. So I went, Tide went on and called him at one in the morning and said, okay, I'm ready. <clears throat> and they're like, you can't come now. Call us in the morning. I'm like, but you don't understand. The cops are driving around. And they're like, call us in the morning. So I called a taxi and uh, got a free ride to someone's house. And uh, I, you know, I, I got in the taxi and I said, I don't have any money. I need to go to these people's house. And then, so I conned him and then I got to the people's house and I told him, you know, I'm just going to knock on the door and I wasn't going to ask him for a place to stay, but I told him I'd sleep in their tree. So they invited me in, and uh, and then I went, then I went, took the bus right over to Cider House, <clears throat> and I walked Norwalk Square and hit up every business to do, you know, I wanted to get drunk one more time, and uh, I hit up every business to uh, for some work, you know, to earn some money, and they fed me and they gave me something to drink and they talked to me, but nobody gave me a dime, and I, and I took that long walk back and forth out in front of the Metropolitan State Hospital, up and down the street. I don't want to go in. Where am I gonna go? And then finally I just went in, and, uh, and it changed my life. You know, I asked God for help, and uh, God helped me, and has, and has ever since. And never has, never has stopped. It seems the more I edge towards God, the more help I get. And uh, I learned that from you people in here in Alcoholics Anonymous. I learned how to take the suggestion. Someone walked up to me and asked me if, uh, if I do this, what I'm doing right now. And I said, sure. And um, I'm not always close around here to be, to be uh, as of service as some others are, but I try to be if I'm asked it. I, you know, I try to do it. And uh, it's changed my life. I've been working steps. I have a sponsor. I go to these meetings. And uh, and it seems to be working so far. I haven't had a drink today. And um, wow, I went from homeless and, and uh, now I... I Went and spent the weekend with my kids up in Big Bear this weekend, Indian princesses. They made me chief of their tribe. Second year in a row, you know. <laughs> they want me to run the show, right? Uh, and I really don't. It runs itself. But um, what a wonderful time we had, man. And uh, I couldn't do that if I was still drinking. It wouldn't even be an option. It would just be something that I'm missing out on. And uh, I'm a, I feel really, really blessed because of it. You know, people told me that um, I do pretty good with the kids, and, and uh, I don't know, I think it's just God doing it, and I'm just trying to, to <laughs> hang on to people's coattails around here. And um, if you're new, and, and you don't think your life can change, it can, you know, give it a shot, listen, you know, go to these meetings and do some of the things that they say, say around here and try it out, give it a shot. You know, if you're, if you're new and you're here, <laughs> what else you got to do, you know? I hated hearing that shit, but I tried it, tried it anyways, and uh, it's working. Thanks for letting me share.